When Ariel Castro appeared in court today, he seemed meek, scared. He tried to hide his face in his collar, an image very much at odds with the truly monstrous picture prosecutors are now painting. Tonight, we're learning about how Castro allegedly kidnapped these three young women and why. We're also hearing how the young women lived, sometimes in chains, always in fear. But perhaps the most disturbing detail comes from the mother of one of the victims, and ABC's David Muir spoke with her directly. Ariel Castro. Tonight, the first glimpse of what an entire city now sees as a face of unspeakable evil. Ariel Castro, the one now held captive, hanging his head in court, handcuffed in a blue jumpsuit, charged with several counts of kidnapping and rape. And while his alleged motives remain a mystery, the prosecutor did not hold back. This child kidnapper operated a torture chamber in private prison in the heart of our city. Prosecutor Timothy McGinty saying the law in Ohio allows for the death penalty if it's proven that Castro caused miscarriages in that house of horrors. I fully intend to seek charges for each and every act of sexual violence, rape, each day of kidnapping, every felonious assault, all his attempted murders, and each act of aggravated murder he committed by terminating pregnancies. Those words delivered just 24 hours after the homecomings here, a decade in the making. We've learned that inside that van, Gina De Jesus was overcome, overwhelmed by the crowd. But she hugged her mother, who told her, you can do it, give them a thumbs up. And she did, a mother helping her daughter all over again. Because she's still that 14-year-old girl. In my eyes, in my heart, she is. So much lost time. Yes. But it it's awesome, though. It doesn't matter how hard it is for me, but it's awesome. You got her back. Yes, that's the most important thing right now. And once inside, Gina told her parents she didn't want to sleep upstairs in a room like she'd been forced to for nearly a decade. The one thing she did say, she says, Mom, I don't want to stay in a room. So I said, you don't have to anymore. So that's part of the process, part, part of her healing and knowing that she now can do what she wants. She said she doesn't want to stay in a room. No. The family sleeping on inflatable mattresses in the living room, her wish granted. We also learned something else, that Gina's mother, Nancy, knew Ariel Castro for years after growing up in the same community, and that Castro spoke to her on several occasions, even after her daughter had disappeared. Most recently, this past year, asking her, how are you doing? And so you would see him and he would say, how are you doing? Like nothing was wrong. Yes. That's chilling. It is. All the while he had your daughter. Yes. You know how many times I've been through that street? I passed by that street. I have a sister who's two blocks and a half away from there. ABC News has learned that inside the house on Seymour Avenue, the young women were locked up and chained in the basement early on in their captivity and were moved upstairs in later years, divided into two rooms. Gina and Michelle Knight often in one bedroom, Amanda Berry and her daughter in another. The young women were warned that there was an alarm system and that it would go off if they tried to escape. It's believed Castro would bring home food and the young women would cook it. Sometimes he would bring home McDonald's. And then there's the little girl, Amanda Berry's daughter, who was carried into that new home 24 hours ago. We now learn she was never told the real names of the other women in that house because of fear she might reveal those names in public. She was the only one Castro would take out to the park, and it's now believed to church as well. And now Ariel's family and friends trying to make sense of a man they thought they knew. His own daughter, Arlene, who was friends with one of the victims, Gina, in fact, she was believed to be the last person to see her on that walk home from school. She once told America's Most Wanted. My mom said no, that I can't go over her house. And so I told her I couldn't, and she said, well, okay, I'll talk to you later. Now her father is the one accused of stealing her friend. She spoke on Good Morning America. And what would you like to say to Gina, her family, and the other women now? Um, I would like to say I, I'm absolutely so so sorry um, I really want to see you Gina and I want you to meet my kids I'm so sorry for everything 
He never mentioned anything about it. He's the, very, the best actor in the world. And we're now hearing from Ricky Sanchez, a musician who played with Castro, a longtime friend, who says he visited the home too many times to count, offering this chilling detail. When I was about to leave, I tried to open the door, I couldn't even, because there were so many locks in there. I mean, they said, wait a minute, I can't get out of here. Would you please help me? They said, oh, wait a minute, I got it for you. And then he opened it for me. He says he was there just last week and that he met the little girl. He grabbed me by the hand. Uh, he introduced her to me as, as his granddaughter. She was shy. She don't, she don't spoke a word. As Castro sat in court, his head buried, the community wondering what now plays in the mind of a man accused of so much evil. Start with kidnapping and rape on one side. ABC station WEWS reporting on a letter found in his home, remorseful, saying he's a sex addict. He has no remorse, in my view, for the victims, for his own family. He only has remorse for himself because people who will do the depraved things that he has done or been alleged to have done for the past 10 years has not one caring or feeling bone in his body about humanity. His family now ruined by his alleged secrets as three other families tonight celebrate their daughters smiling again. They can smile freely now, which is the most beautiful thing in those three that went through that they can actually smile now. And they are smiling. Yes, they are every second, every second. My daughter can't stop smiling. And neither can mom. I know, oh yes. I'm David Muir for Nightline in Cleveland.